Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for turning in to, or tuning in, I should say, into this episode of Mama's Confidence But Dad's Invited. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Mary Johnson, who is from, say, let me say it correctly, it's Parent Entrepreneur HQ, correct? You got it. All right, all right, Parent Entrepreneur HQ. Um, the website, and I'll let her go ahead and um, say her bio and introduce herself and uh, tell you who she is. But this episode is really, really close to my heart because this is how to create profits while, while potty training. She has a really great analogy about this and I'd love for her to share that with you. So go ahead and take it over, Mary. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Jessica, thank you so much. Um, Mary Catherine Johnson, Mary Johnson, mom, uh, female, uh, call me whatever you want, right? I'll probably answer, yeah. if, especially if you say mom. But uh, I yeah, have, right. you know, gosh, I started this little podcast oh. and this little website uh, called Parent Entrepreneur HQ because I discovered that the skills and the stages of parenting exactly mirrored the skills and, and stages required for business success. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I put those two, like, like you said, if you can get through potty training and, and you don't have a, a mentally damaged kid and you haven't like gone crazy and you can do business. Business is really not that difficult. It's not as difficult as potty training. So uh, that's, yeah, that's where it started. <laughs> and I've just been interviewing incredible people, incredible parents who are entrepreneurs. I've been writing about that um, because once I made that discovery, it's like, uh, duh, everything, perseverance, yeah. patience, yeah. right? You yeah. know, so um, I, I um, <laughs> we can get into all the details when, uh, when you want, but basically that's what this is all about. That if you have raised a child to the age of three, or beyond, you got this. You got this business thing. It's okay. Exactly, exactly. So I love that, and and what you say is that it, it's so true, right? Now, I for me, it's a little bit different because I my children actually potty trained themselves, which I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> except for I think right. two. Did you write a book about that? Right. <laughs> somehow they just. And they Lego and they seem, you know, and they just like my oldest daughter just went. Okay, just, but what, how old was she? She was uh, two and she just, she's like, I want to go to the bathroom. And from there on, she's like, I want some underwear and we moved forward and that was it. And then, but you know what? I, that was only with uh, what, three of my six. So, or no, four, I'm sorry, four of my six. So, you yeah. know, I had the other two that. Yeah. 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 But they, um, apparently you were relaxed enough and you were just like, yeah, whatever. It's, it's fine. It, we can do it when exactly. we do it. No big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, so exactly. many of us, we've got the books and we've got all the deal and, we've, and it has yeah. to happen. And well, exactly. you know, but mine were like four and they were boys and they just weren't even oh. interested at all. Oh. So yeah, it yeah. was a little different. They're just like, whatever, you know, and yeah. I'm picking up this 30 pound kid and putting him on the changing <laughs> table and cleaning things out of his diaper that are almost as big as my husband's. Oh, no, oh, not we're, we're stopping. You know, oh, this, is, wow. this is enough. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. And I think yeah. that that's so true. I think it's the boys. I, you know what? I, when I think about it, it was my two boys that were the hardest. I think the girls were just like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going and we're good. You know? Yeah, and we're and also, you know, it feels funny, right? Cause we, we have yeah. to wipe and all that stuff. The boys don't have to do anything. <laughs> It just comes out, you know, it sprays out like a hose. They, they don't have to worry about anything. We've got it, you know, we, we want to be a little more clean and it feels funny. And yeah, so I don't know. I, my mom keeps claiming that I was potty trained by 18 months. I'm like, wait a minute. Are you kidding? How could that be? That, that resonates a lot with what I'm saying, right? Like, that, okay. You know. Okay, so <laughs> let's digress a little bit. I know. Uh, people are like, oh, my God. I know. <laughs> are you quit talking about that. <laughs> in like five seconds. Um, okay, so what is your occupation? Tell me exactly what it is you do. I help parents start and grow businesses around mm -hmm. the time they spend with their kids. I have been blissfully unemployable since 2006. Yeah. So if wow. you want to know how I'm employed, that's kind of how I, that's, that's how I'm employed. That's what I gotcha. do. I just, and that's all facets of it. Typically the three things I focus on are marketing, technology, and lifestyle. 
Those are the okay. three, those are the three areas. And because that's really what, that's where, where it comes from. That's what it's all about. Okay. You said, I'm sorry, there was marketing. Technology. Tech. And lifestyle. So technology, like what tools to use. So if you're going to start a, a, a online courses, what mm -hmm. tools, what, what software is available, what tools should you use? That kind of thing. The technology so available. You're giving everything. You're giving like the full from, from launch to creation to now where do you get your clients? So you're all yeah. around full service. Well, yeah, because, um, you know, my business has evolved along with my kids. So I started in 2003. So wow. I, and I started by creating my own website and finding credit card processing and how am I going to make my product? Cause I had a product that I was selling online. The first oh, okay. um, novelty maternity store online was mommy wow. loves and that's my company. And uh, so I had to do all that stuff and figure it all out. And I had a little bit of an edge because I was at the time I was a headhunter. I was a person who found jobs for technology people. Huh. So I just tapped my resources. I tapped my network and said, Hey, if I was going to, to get uh, credit card processing, where would I go and how would it work? Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to have to make a website, where would I go and how would it work? And so they pointed me in the right directions. They pointed me to the latest stuff and the latest tools that were available. And I just went and get a crash course. And if I, you know, figured it out and if I had any questions, mm -hmm. ask them. And it's just gone from there. I, I really, I really love learning new things, love learning new technologies and figuring it all out. And how do you make it work? And yeah. how does this work with that? And, you know, so 2003, that's 13 years that I've been doing this. And as it's grown, I have grown with it. And of course, coincidentally, my kids have grown too. So I have a 14 year old and a 17 year old. Oh, that's awesome. So that's now if you want to look at the stages of parenting, I'm in my exit strategy yeah. with my kids, right? <laughs> exactly. My yeah. 17 year old yeah. is going to exit pretty soon. So I have, I'm, I'm doing all that stuff and figuring out how the exit strategy works. Right. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Okay. So let me jump right into the interview. How did you overcome the fear of getting started? If you have any fear at all. <sighs> I did. Um, I had lots of fears, but the way I overcame them was just taking the next thing. Okay. So if I, so I, I went and decided this and talked to my husband mm -hmm. about it and said, you know, gosh, there's nobody online doing this. I could yeah. be the first. And, yeah. uh, I just started by, we said, yeah, let's go for it. And I went down and got my business license at the County. The County gives the business license. So I went down and got my business license and that was like, okay, this is real. I'm actually going to do this. Yeah. And I just looked at the next thing I had to do. So, okay, that's great. Now, how am I going to get a website made? Mm -hmm. And I just looked at those little steps. And there, I had, at the time I had an 18 month old and an, um, a four year old. So wow. what was my 18 month old doing? He was trying to figure out how to walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Baby steps. So I basically started with that. I'm like, okay, what's the first thing I have to do? Mm -hmm. And just, yeah. Just looked at that. I didn't look at the end result. I had a goal that I was going to have it. Um, I wanted to have everything ready to launch by November because I wanted to have the first Christmas season, the first holiday season. I mm -hmm. wanted to have my products available because they were great gifts. Wow. And I, little by little, each step every day when they were napping or, you know, whatever I could, usually <laughs> between nine and like one right. in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. But I was younger then, so it was easier. Well, you're still young. You still look good, girl. Oh, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> Keep telling me that, and I'll come on anytime. <laughs> you look good. Um, so I, you. I really wanted to um, kind of touch on the point that you said that you know it was just like your your son was taking his steps, and you were taking your steps in your business. That's really profound. That's really really profound. You know, I didn't come up with this stuff on my own. <laughs> you know, right. I'm not that smart. I really just looked around and saw what was going on and uh, used the tools available. And that's what I had. Mm -hmm. um, I've also been in, in corporate America. So I've worked for Jenny Craig Weight Loss Centers. Um, I've worked for staffing firms, helping people find jobs. Like I mentioned, I have a degree in nutrition and food science. So I know the steps to try and teach someone something. Mm -hmm. And I know you can't just leap from the concept to, okay, here's how you do it. And you're done. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, 
all those things were pretty much telling me this is what you have to do. You just just do one thing at a time. And I wasn't overwhelmed with the whole list, even though the deeper I got, the more I uncovered that I still had to do. Exactly. And that's there. The fear came up and I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Just look at what's right here. <laughs> okay. So how am I going to link the credit cards to the website? And, you know, that, and otherwise yeah. I would, otherwise I would have quit. But I would have been like, I'm done. Yeah. And that's, and that's what I tell a lot of um, the women and the dads, actually, I've had a lot more dads reach out to me recently um, that I work with is just along the journey. You know, it's just taking that journey and enjoying that journey and knowing that you're learning because you never stop learning. Oh, you know? thank you. Yes. That's so, exactly. Yes. You enjoy the journey. That's it. Because that's all we have. It's not a destination. <laughs> we all reach the same destination and it ain't pretty. Yeah. I don't want to go. What's so funny about that is that as soon as you make, you know, your 5K a month, whatever your goal is, then you want more. <laughs> you yeah. know, so that's why it's oh, always yeah. the journey. <laughs> you because know? you also spend more. Thank you very yeah. much. And so when you first, you know, when I first started out and I got, I remember I got my first um, TV show. I put on my first um, news channel, like interview. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm so happy. And my mom's like, yes, I'm gonna, you're going to be successful. You're going to be the next Oprah. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to. And so I went and I did it and I came back home and I posted it and everybody's like, yay, you're like a celebrity. And then I got the next one and I'm like, yes. And I told everybody, they're like, oh, you're on TV again? Yeah. You're always on TV. I was like, well, nobody's just like <laughs> What? That's like saying you're always walking in the door. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, well, dang. <laughs> hello? Do you know what that takes? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> so, yes, it's that I say all of that to say that once you hit one milestone, you'll have another yes. and another because you'll get so used to just like, oh, you're on TV again, you know? So it's but like, they're it not opens, impressed with that anymore. Yeah, you but know? then it opens more doors that you Definitely. didn't have access to. So you can't jump exactly. from, from um, never being on TV to mm -hmm. having your own syndicated show. Uh, exactly. exactly. You can't do all that. Sounds like you said, right? All yeah. stepping stones. Little yeah. steps. You had, so that being on TV opens up other networking opportunities, other opportunities to talk to other people that will lead somewhere you have no idea where, exactly. unless you have a specific goal in mind. So if you have a yeah. goal that that's your network, you want to have that show, mm -hmm. you have to you have to do those little steps to get there. But most of the time, we we open things up, and we uh, when we take advantage of opportunities and hit a milestone doors open. We didn't even know existed. Exactly. Yep. And that's the big piece of that. That definitely is the big piece of that is that, you know, after I did that, you know, I got, I had that third party creditability, credit, yeah. credit, blah, blah, blah. Credit, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, so I was able to then move forward and have people say, you know, Oh, you know, I saw you on television. So now I know you're good. And it's like, okay, I guess, <laughs> you know, it's always yeah, wonderful. the same person. Um, but yeah, but yeah, definitely. So back to the interview, like I was saying. Um, so yeah, what does, what part does confidence play in your business? You know, um, I think it, it, uh, well, feeling and displaying confidence, I think plays a huge part in success because if you don't feel at least a certain amount of confidence in yourself, your skills, what you have to offer, um, people will know that people will feel it. And they, how, how can you guide someone else? So I guess I don't have to have confidence, like when I had my product, um, when I was actually making it, I, I guess I didn't have to have very much confidence there, because I was behind the scenes, it was all online, it didn't have me anywhere in it. It was just that you know, I was just doing, working the business. I was actually in my sweatshop, you know, <laughs> then I guess I didn't need as much confidence, right? Because I'm just yeah. making the product and shipping it out. I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to do anything. So the confidence there just had to be that I can make this product and I can do a good job, but it's not me. Wait, if you're coaching someone, you, you better feel pretty secure. There you go. In what you're doing. <laughs> let's, let's dig in deep with that because that's, that's the key, right? It's when you're coaching someone else and you're trying to motivate someone else to move to the next level in their life, how much confidence you need in yourself to even be able to speak the words. Yeah, but you, yeah. So the basics of that is, you know, you have to have enough confidence to speak the words. But really, I deal with this all the time. I don't know if you do, but I but, second guess myself all the time. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's part of being human. Oh, yeah. Um, so I don't, even though I think I know the the direction, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm dealing with someone's life and if they're 
they're yeah. asking me for advice and they're actually taking my advice. What if it's the wrong thing? What if yeah. it's not right? <laughs> you know, and I have to really look at that and go, everything I've done in my life has led me to where I am right now. Exactly. And that's a pretty good place. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to realize that all the information that I have available, I'm using to the best of my ability. I'm not lying. I'm not stretching the truth. I'm not, you know, yeah. so I'm just going to have to trust that what I'm saying is what I believe and what experience has taught me and, and know immediately that if something isn't working, I'm not just going to keep pounding that and tell them, no, keep doing this, keep doing this. And it's not mm -hmm. working for them for whatever reason. And then yeah. switch gears and change. And, you know, I, that's, I think where the confidence comes is to not just quit and stop exactly. if something isn't working mm -hmm. to change, to grow mm -hmm. and change and allow yourself to talk to individuals like you and learn mm -hmm. and grow. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, and I had to tell you, Jessica, the, I, I've recently started combining online and offline. So I just went to my first meetup group like two months ago. Good, Good for you. I have, I have met, I have masterminds that I, we all meet on Skype. We've never met each other. Uh -huh. Incredible uh -huh. entrepreneurs that I've been able to have the a distinct honor to, to have look at my business and give me advice. And uh -huh. I get to do the same. But I actually just one day just went, you know what? I'm tired of sitting here for having a computer. I'd like to actually go meet people and be able to smell what they smell like. That's right. Because they're in the room, right? Exactly. You have to have <laughs> that balance of the two. You definitely do. Yeah. 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 And that was a great growing experience. I've gotten amazing referrals and information mm -hmm. and new business and, you yeah. know, partnering opportunities and all kinds of things. And it really just made me stretch because I've been behind the computer since 2003. Wow. So yeah, wow. I had to get out and, you know, and combined with kids, you know, I got oh, out with the kids and course. went to stuff, yeah. but yeah. not business. Business, business was all online. Exactly. Wow. That's amazing. You know, and that's so funny because I, um, when I speak to, um, entrepreneurs about online, especially moms, um, and usually when I teach the online stuff, it's more or less I'm teaching it to women who are, um, in disadvantaged um, pop popularity. They're in, you know, yeah. they're in shelters, they're, you know, going through stuff. Um, yeah. So with that population, I tell them it's very important for you to also network offline as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not, that's where your confidence yeah. is built. Like I said, you can sit behind your computer all yeah, day long, no. but to walk into a place you've never been yeah. before and look at people you've never met before, you have no idea who they are, that, that takes a certain mm -hmm. amount of confidence. That would stop a lot of people. It's yeah, no, exactly. I'm not sure if your screen's freezing, but mine no, is. No, yeah, so I can't. You've, you've frozen. Okay. I'm going to try to refresh here in a second. All right. Let's see. Gotta love Blab. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it's pretty good for being in beta still. It's still pretty good. Uh, no, definitely. Definitely. Let's try to refresh again. Because that didn't work so much. <laughs> okay, well, as long as you can hear me, I guess I'm okay. I can, yeah. Um, and, um, and the picture I'll isn't terrible either. I mean, it's not like it's stuck on you going, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> oh, there you are. Yay. Yay. Yeah, I don't want to be stuck going, you know. So, anyway. Um, so, yeah, so you, you're definitely right. You have to have that balance of meeting people in person as well as because you want people to know who you are. And I think you get a good sense of that using like online platforms like this, live streaming platforms. But you want to, like you said, smell them and be able to touch them and give them a hug, yeah. you know, because a lot of our moms oh, yeah. and our parent preneurs, they're oh. in need of that human touch that yeah. is not their child. Yeah, because yeah, they're <laughs> hanging on you all the time. Yeah, you don't need any more. But, you know, it's so funny when we leave it, we miss it. But anyway, that's another topic. <laughs> but, yeah, you do. Other other people to tell you you're doing a good job, you know, that that it's okay. We all, oh, my gosh, the mistakes we make. We all make them. And, uh, exactly. yeah, it's okay. You're, you're, yeah, there's no perfect parent. Not at all. Nobody's dying. No, nobody's dying. You're good. Exactly. <laughs> no one's bleeding or dying, right? You're good. You're fine. <laughs> We're all yeah. good. Now, what motivates you and then how do you stay focused? What motivates you to move oh, forward? Oh boy. Focus is a big one. So motivation and focus, I think are a little, little bit different, but um, I, 
yeah, yeah motivate what motivates me is um <laughs> uh again i use the same kind of concept as uh i did when when you were asking me about how did i uh, you know, how, how did I stay confident and stay, stay doing things? And I said, baby steps, uh, the motivation, it, it, it's constantly changing because once okay. I hit a particular, so when I was, my kids were young, my motivation was to leave my full, my part-time job and actually work full-time from home. Okay. So that mm -hmm. milestone reached. Now what's the next motivation? And then it was, you know, giving my kids opportunities, music lessons, blah, 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 you know, all those kinds of things and doing it to be home with my family, raising my kids when they come home from school, be there, help them with homework, have a flexible schedule. So that's fine. Now they're in high school. They don't really need me to have a flexible schedule anymore because they kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I still pick, pick up sometimes, but my 17 year old pretty much has his own life. He's getting ready to go to college. You know, he comes home, he eats dinner with us most times, sometimes not. So it's a totally transitional time right now. I still have my 14 year old. And so I still participate with him, but now my motivation is, you know, not necessarily retirement, but my life, my exit strategy, my life after kids, I'm thinking about what I want that to be like. And I want to travel. I want to actually go live in another country and experience another culture for at least a year. So oh, wow. that's what keeps me motivated, the, the constantly moving target. Yeah, that's and awesome. The, and the journey along that way. So that gives me so many things. It gives me something new to shoot for. It gives me new opportunities for learning and growth. Um, you know, it really, that's what keeps me motivated is growing and learning and, and, and changing that target and figuring out what I'm going to do next. Now, now on the flip side of that, how do you focus? focus. <laughs> that's the key. That's the tough one. Cause I'm one of those that's I'm, I'm, I have FOMO, you know what FOMO is, right? Fear of missing okay. out. There we go. I was like, hold on, give me a minute. Fear. Cause you know, there's all these analogies yeah. and things oh, that are coming yeah. out. Fear of missing out. I have yeah. that a lot because, you know, again, same with my technology that I love technology. So I'm constantly wanting to grow and learn new technology, you know, like oh, Snapchat, what's Snapchat? I've got to figure out Snapchat. I've got to get on Snapchat. You know, it's let me just give you one piece of advice there. <laughs> get with your teen. I told you, and I think I've told you this offline. Get with your teenager. Cause I tell you, my daughter told me about Snapchat five years ago. Yeah. Now I've been doing it five years ago. Hello. So now I, what I mean. I'm doing it now, but but my point of that is that makes me not be focused because I'm yeah. doing everything. So yeah. no, I I stay focused by uh, really three things, and well, four things. The okay. the first one is um, my morning routine. I call it my power morning, and right. each of the letters in the word power. Of course, everything I do is around power. So it, it, each of the letters in power stand for something. So it's peace. So okay. I, I meditate. I, I use my uh, Headspace app. Love that app. So I meditate. I journal. That's openness. I have to make myself open to new opportunities, new things, new way of doing things. If I, when I, before I had ever done any online courses, I walk myself through what I thought it might be like. And then it's not as scary because then it's kind of like I've already visited it and I kind of have an idea of what I might want to do, even though what actually happens is totally different because I haven't ever done it before. So again, New things are going to happen that I didn't even know. So that's kind of my openness. And then W stands for who, who, um, who needs my love, my patience, and my attention today. Most of the time, that's my kids or my clients. Sometimes it's me, right? Um, yeah. What, yeah. what are my top three activities? What are my top three tasks I must do today in order to feel successful? and move my business forward toward profit, like we were talking about. What are the top three things I have to do today to increase profit and move forward? And then why? Why the heck am I doing this? Why am I getting up at five in the morning to sit in my chair and do Headspace? Okay, so I revisit that, that, yeah. that target. So I do, and then the E is exercise and the R is reading. So um, I do that power morning and it usually takes me no more than an hour, sometimes less. Okay, so I might just go for a walk with the dogs. I might do a Tabata exercise, whatever. So there's one thing that keeps me focused because then my brain is ready to start the day and my body. And um, my schedule is the number one thing that keeps me focused because I don't make to-do lists. I don't just write a to-do list of things I have to do in the day. I actually, um, I actually write it on my schedule. It has to be on my schedule. Yeah. Um, and so I write it on my schedule, everything that, if it's not on schedule, it doesn't get done. 
Um, I use the Pomodoro timer. You familiar with the Pomodoro timer? Yes. I Mm -hmm. use the Pomodoro timer, 25 minutes focused and uh, usually 10 minutes off. It doesn't really work too much for me though. (laughs) What what part doesn't work? Do you just not listen to it? Yeah, I just don't listen to it. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) So yeah, I use a Pomodoro timer, not every day consistently all the time, but I use it when I really want to focus on that, especially with writing. When I'm writing, I use a Pomodoro timer and I clear my desktop and I, you know, and then I'm thinking of Parkinson's law. John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire talked about this Mm -hmm. when he was on my show. Mm -hmm. And it's really the task, you know, the time you give for a task to be completed is the time that it'll take. So if you give yourself all day, it's going to take all day. Take all day. Exactly. That's right. So So true. Yeah. So those are the four things that usually that I tap into to keep me focused every day. Now, what tips can you provide to us about the schedule? Because I think that's huge, hugely important, especially as a mompreneur. And if we have some dads listening, we have some dads as well, because dads are invited to Mama's Confidence. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Tell us some tips you have on schedule. Oh, my goodness. All right. So um, I used to, when my kids were little, I actually had a schedule, and this was pre-internet days, right? pre pre-computer. I mean, my, I started a business on a Windows 98 computer. My first son was born in 98, 1998. So, um, so it was before all the, you know, Google calendars and, you know, links, you know, Mm -hmm. and everything is synced and all that. So I had a calendar on my, on my refrigerator and with kids, especially this worked really well. Um, Mm -hmm. And it kind of kills two birds with one stone. You actually teach them time as well and patience. So I would have that calendar on there and I would, if there was, let's say it was holiday time and I had orders coming in that needed to be get out that day. And I couldn't wait until the kids went to bed at eight o'clock, right? There were things I had to do. I would color code that schedule and put all the things that they wanted to do in the day. We're going to have a play date. We're going to go to the park. We're going to eat lunch. I mean, everything. And I would Mm -hmm. color code it with their favorite colors. So if my oldest liked green, my youngest liked blue. So if the young, oldest wanted to watch Thomas the Tank Engine, or if the youngest wanted to watch um, Little Lion Stunts, that was his favorite. So you yeah. know, I would color code, watch that and their colors. And then the few little times when I had to work, I would color code that mom's color. I'm, a, I'm purple. I'm a purple gal. Oh, and, nice. uh, and so they would, you know, they would like, mommy, I'm working, you know, mommy, I want this, I want to do that. You know, whatever they would do, they would want to do something. I would bring them to the calendar and go, see, look, this is your next time right now. This is mommy's time and mommy has to work, but look what's coming up. And I would get them used to looking at that calendar, looking at the clock. And, and I made sure they, you know, times were the same. Um, exactly. and, and they would then know that it's, it's okay. Mom just has to do this, but we're going to do your thing in just 10 minutes or pretty soon, as soon as that color goes. That awesome. And so I kind of, that's, that's what I do now. But with, I, I color code my calendar, my schedule, um, not for the kids, but for my tasks, you know, priority exactly. tasks and all that. Yeah. But really most of the work that I had to get done because I had a heat press. So that's like a 375 degree. Oh, yeah. So when they oh, were yeah. little, I want them in there. First off, it was, yeah. you know, too hot. I, but so I, I did, but I taught them, you don't touch that. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, so I would work most of the time when they were napping or when they were sleeping. When they got older yep. and didn't take very many naps, I actually had a little table in my office, a little kid's table with kid's chairs. And we would have work time and they would work and I would work. And they had, awesome. had it, my Windows 98 computer. I retired it to them, to their computer. And uh, yeah. I put uh, games on it. And this was before iPads, right? So we actually yeah. had discs computers that would go on the computer. And um, yeah. like Thomas the Tank Engine had this like machine, this plastic box thing that sat over the keyboard and uh-huh. you strapped it to the keyboard, making sure that it matched certain keys. And whenever they would touch something or hit or push a lever, it would push down a certain key and make something happen on the computer. Oh, gotcha. Oh my gosh. They loved that. Yeah, yeah. And I had the same thing for Winnie the Pooh, the same kind of thing on Winnie the Pooh, and the same thing for um, Tonka. There was like a Tonka helicopter thing that they played. They, and so I would save those games, their favorite games, for my our work time. So that we both sat in that room. They were old enough to understand, and they would play on their computer and do work, and sometimes they'd do schoolwork, and I would work, so that we both kind of worked together. So you kind of have to adapt it to the ages of of your kids, right? That's a great point. And that's kind of basically what 
I show women too is, you know, when you have your computer set up to buy them that little computer, you can get it like Target or something and have them type on their computer too yeah. while you're typing, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, mm -hmm. You're, you're right on target, girl. <laughs> you are right. On Confirmation. Target. That's, That's awesome. all I needed was Jessica to tell me I was yeah. on, on point and I'm good. <laughs> I got it, man. <laughs> hey, I'm saying I'm trying to navigate six kids and you like, you already had it like boom, boom, boom. So I'm like, okay. I, I'm sorry, but I would not be, I will obviously we do whatever we have to do. Right. So if I had six, I would have been able to handle it, but yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So moving on, have you had any problems with success? Like, have you had haters in your line of work? <sighs> no, I haven't had haters, but I'll tell you one thing I did have a problem with. Um, in my early days, I didn't realize, um, well, no, I did realize it, but I brought someone on my team that didn't realize copyright infringement issues. And we had talked about it. We knew, uh, you know, I, I made sure when they came on that they knew they couldn't just go get images from somewhere, that kind of thing. And so I thought it was handled, but I, and that, but I didn't follow up on it. And so this person put a blog post up and uh, she, took a, she took an image from a site. And it actually, the site that she used was a free image site. So we were able to do it. But I don't know how the site used the image from Getty Images. So I don't know, we found it on the, on the free site, but Getty Images yeah. claimed that it was theirs. Okay. They hounded me like you would not believe. Wow. You would not believe it. It was, it was like, uh, like I was, um, they were, they were going to come after me and, and, you know, shut down my business, business. If I didn't, my if I didn't goodness. pay them $10,000, like, are you oh, kidding me? Uh, no. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, it was, it was not pretty. It was very, very difficult. And that was a very difficult time because I was second guessing myself. Did maybe I shouldn't do this. I can't play with the big boys, you know, mm -hmm. that all of those confidence killers were coming up and oh, wow. it was tough. It was very difficult. And that lasted, uh, that lasted like three or four years Oh, of back and forth. And finally I just stopped responding just stopped because it was like, you know, dude, you're, you're, you have no claim. First off, I'm a little teeny business here. There, and that was one blog post. I've removed the image. It, I'm no longer using it. Exactly. No, no I, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, um, that's about the gist of it, right? It's like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I, we got it from a reputable place that was, you know, and, and the gal that did that was on my team at the time showed me this is where I got it. And we saw the image and it was the same image. I'm like, here's where we got it. We did not do anything. They would not, you know, we're getting our lawyers and we're going to, oh, it was awful. It was really bad. Was and that have totally affected my confidence. Totally did. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you, you've survived it now and you're podcasting and doing all this good stuff. So I'm going to ask you um, two more questions and then I'd like for you to hit on how you can profit with um, either your podcast or any other tips you can, you can throw in there or any other business you want to throw in there. So I'm going to let you choose the business. I'm not going to say it has to be podcasting. It can be whatever, but how you make a profit while you're potty training. We want to actually educate our listeners yes. on that yes. <laughs> and the people that are watching as well. Yes. Um, but two more questions. Um, so, the, the uh, second to last question, I should say, is name one thing your kids have done to make you laugh or cry. <laughs> um, I, I, obviously, I'm going to think recently. Um, oh, yeah. What they've done to make me cry. Has, and and um, this is from a place of, of such pride and joy. It's not a okay. negative cry. Um, okay. Yeah, either or. Now, now having girlfriends kind of making me cry the other way, but <laughs> cry negatively. But no, that's actually what it's about. I, I see my boy. You don't want the boys to get with the girls, huh? You don't want them to have any girlfriends. Well, oh. you do, but come on. It, it, it's, a, it's just this whole, you know what they're going, you know what they're going to face. Right. Exactly. You know, possible broken yeah. hearts and, you know, all those new experiences they've never had. Yeah. And 
sex and oh my god i was just about to say and sex and condoms and sex oh <laughs> my goodness and babies and grandma oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no no <laughs> stop right there 17 okay that's enough right wait remember mom okay. wants to go live in another country for a year and she can't do that if you got grandbabies coming so exactly. no. Okay. <laughs> no so Move back, back, we'll back to. No, but it's true. It's true, back. though. So even that, you know, I see them. It, this could be a whole show that we could easily talk about. But, you know, we we okay. carry our we, we carry our own stuff from when we were raised. Oh. And mm -hmm. my husband and I got together when we were very young. I mean, we met when we were 16 and we've been married. Oh, we've wow. been married since you know, first girlfriend, first boyfriend. And oh, we've been married. Wow. We got married. At, I was 19. He was 20. So uh, within we're, we're about, I think, seven months apart in our ages. Um, and we've been married. It'll be 33 year this, years this year. My goodness. But now that, yeah. That's a that's a June one. That's a Father's Day. Let me let's interview the dads on how it is to have their wives be in business. So anyway, yeah, sorry. totally. Yeah, that's a yeah. But so but when we got together, I mean, you know, think about it. When you're 16 and you attach yourself that strongly to someone, there's there's something missing in your family that you're trying to find in another person. Girl, say it again. There's something missing in your family when you try to find someone to attach to at the age of 16. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was a teen mom. I was 17 when I had my first. You know, birth, right? you know that. So, yeah. so we come to this. And so I'm looking at my 17 year old now and all the bells are going off. Right. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. She's going to, you know, and I'm thinking of myself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking mm -hmm. about the way I raised him, which exactly. was totally different. Exactly. It was yeah. open. It was, we, we, uh, share information. I'm a safe place. We've talked about masturbation. We've talked, about, you know, okay. <laughs> I've talked about, please bring tissues into your room <laughs> if you're going to do that or go into the bathroom. Okay. So yeah, I have a funny, I have a funny story <laughs> and I got to share it now since you said it. <laughs> so my son, and he's going to be so mad when he gets to this. I apologize now, son. I love you to death. That's my little warrior. He's the one to help me cut the depression. But anyway, he's my warrior. Yes. I almost lost him while he was, um, while I was pregnant with him. And he's my little warrior. I told him my little soldier. But anyway, so I had to say that. So he knows that mommy loves him. Yes. He takes a shower with his door open, with the bathroom door open. And he is 10. He's, he's 10. He was 10 at the time. He's 11 now. And he, I walk past the door and he's in the shower. And all I see is him rubbing himself. <laughs> and I'm going, what are you doing? He's like, oh, oh, yeah, oh. no, you don't want to do that, Mama. I know it's shocking for us, and uh, you know, I mean, the poor kid's gonna be like, I did something wrong. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? Yeah. This is the first it's time normal. Yes, I didn't, I didn't experience this with the other son. Know. You know, luckily they closed the door, so we're good. <laughs> you know, this one, I'm like, dude, I know it feels good. I know, yeah, you know, but you gotta shut the door. <laughs> At number one, and then number two is, you know. Just leave it alone at this point. You know, you're kind of young to be. So anyway, I just didn't know how to handle that. I you know, know what do you don't. say? What do you do? You know, we're not boys. We gotta, first off, we gotta we have to realize and understand that we're human. As that's mom, it. that's it. You know, and when I do that, because that's what I said to him. So you know, I'm talking to him, and, and I'm like, okay. So have you done this? Have you done that? You know, I mean, where, where, what, what's going on? You know, that, cause he's got this girlfriend and they're starting. Exactly. To, so, you know, and I, and exactly. he's looking at me like, what? I, don't worry. And, exactly. and you know, when I, when I got the slap in the face that I had to mm -hmm. check myself was when he said, mm -hmm. don't worry, mom, I won't do anything bad. Oh, and I had to say, whoa, sex yeah. is not bad. Exactly. I'm sorry if I'm making you think that my reaction is making, and, and I said, I'm sorry. That is a, that is a very powerful thing for a parent to say. I had no problem yeah. saying it. You know what, love? I'm sorry. You're right. Please do not think that sex is I bad. I'm sorry. And thank you yes. are two of the biggest things you could say to your children. Yes. Yes. And because of that, you know, you could see he relaxed, you know, we started mm -hmm. talking and I just, that, then that allowed me to lead into, you know, I need to just be sure because you're 17, she's 16. We really want to make sure that you are both prepared for things because she's 16 and she's going to go through certain things. And she's going to experience certain things. You have no clue 
what she's going to experience. So we mm-hmm. need to talk about that. And I need to talk about when, if you think that might be happening, we need to talk. <laughs> because that was kind of my bottom line of it too. was like, okay, he's only 10. Yeah. So I immediately jumped into, oh my gosh, is something doing, right. is someone doing something? I, oh, doing, I know. See, and we, so I overreacted. because we think that because of our experiences, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. don't, mm-hmm. people, people, I'm like, oh, you know, well, know. Yeah, you know, because you know. things were done to me, sweetheart. So that's immediately where my brain goes. Yep. Even though yep. there's, I, it, ha- it isn't them. It, it isn't them. Exactly. So yeah, that's what mm-hmm. I mean. We have to. So in that, in answer, we've got, we've gone way beyond your question. Sorry. You know what? But, I think it's needed. I think it's needed. It I is. think that moms really need to have these conversations and be really real. Like I said, we are all human. We are all women yes. first before we became this super being of being a mom, which there is no such thing. <laughs> and then we, and then we add entrepreneurship to it, and then we're going to have all those things. We're going to we're going to overreact to. You know, like my Getty Images thing. Oh my gosh, that's it. I must be stupid. It's just the worst. Right? You know, what did I do wrong? You know, I can't play with the big guys. What was I thinking? Yeah. So it's all, it's the same thing. You need to grow in both, both of them and give yourself, give me, just give yourself a break. All right. (laughs) But anyway, what he's done, what they've done to make me cry happily, because they both have girlfriends now. The 14 year old too, but that one's much more innocent. It's not a sexual girlfriend thing yet at all. So, uh, but that's what they've done. Yeah. You know, they've, they, they, I've, I've just been sitting watching them and they they make me cry with, with their, their kindness, their compassion. You know, they, they Mm -hmm. say things like, you know, you're to their girlfriend. You're like, you have such a wonderful heart. Um, You're so kind. I mean, they're showing such kindness mm-hmm. and compassion to these young girls, these young women. And that mm-hmm. just makes my heart melt because oh, so they're, you know, they're, you know, I, I, so many men that I've known have not been that way. I was just about to say it's something they're yeah. probably saying exactly what these girls need to hear. Yes. But they don't. Yes. And then, you know, yep. luckily my husband is, th- and that's where they get it. Yeah. He's calm yeah. and kind and compassionate and, you know, gentle and all those words. But at the same time, he's a man. And, you know, at the same time, my boys are boys. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they have that heart. And that oh. is, it, you know, if they have that, the rest will figure itself out. Yeah. So I'm going to take this interview and I'm going to show it to my husband. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, like you wouldn't before. Maybe you wanted to kind of hide it from him before. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you don't need to know what I do on my show. I know, your- I know. My husband doesn't listen to my podcast. I can say anything <laughs> I want. <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather you not, actually. <laughs> I do. I have to watch what I say now because my older son actually edits my podcast. So he listens oh. to it. So I have to watch. Oh, I got to take some classes from him. I need editing. <laughs> okay. So- you can hire him. I'm, I'm pimping him out. <laughs> <laughs> Emails is considered that email sent. <laughs> All right. So uh, one tip on how to gain confidence. If any mom's out there, she wants to go back to school. She wants to start a business or a dad. I, I keep forgetting. I, yeah, I apologize. I I my apologies dudes right now. Yeah. Cause I always say moms first, yeah. but um, any dad or mom that wants to go back to school, wants to start a business, wants to just get out there and start speaking, write a book, whatever. Yes. What's that one tip of confidence you would give to them? Start with a baby step and master that baby step and you will grow your confidence from there. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is that there is something in your life that you have done, you have experienced where you have gone beyond yourself. You have grown beyond where you were before, whatever it is. And you know, we didn't talk about very much about my experience, but um, the number one thing that made me feel confident to be able to start a business was because I, I broke both my legs when I was eight months pregnant with my second son. So I had both legs and casts up to the knee. And that was a, you want, uh, that was a, that was an amazing experience. It, I was so depressed. I, cause I'm fiercely independent. I couldn't do anything on my own. I couldn't wash my hair. I couldn't take a shower, a bath. I couldn't cook. I could none of the things that I normally do at all that I take for granted. I couldn't do it at, at all. So through that whole process, and it was a total journey, I didn't jump from, I can't do everything, anything, and I'm depressed to, oh, it's fine now. Um, you know, I had lots of steps in between there. But when I finally got to the end of it, 
and I could carry my son in my arms on my own two feet because I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even carry him anywhere because I had to use a walker to get around. So I needed both my hands on the walker. So I couldn't carry him for two months. And uh, when I could finally walked out of the hospital carrying my son and, and one one leg out of a cast and the other one in a walking boot, I said to myself, if I can do this with my sense of humor intact, I can do anything. And I, I had to go back and revisit that. So if you, anything in your life, it doesn't have to be breaking your legs when you're eight months pregnant. It can be mm-hmm. anything. It can be learning how to drive a car. It can be yeah. your first checking account. It can be any little thing that you overcame that fear of doing it. Revisit it. Put it up on your on, on a sticky on your computer, something. If I can do blank, whatever that is, yeah. I can do anything. Yeah. And take the baby step. Wow. That's, that's the only thing I've been able to do in, in terms of increasing my confidence. And, you know, there's a saying that I use at, from that mm-hmm. experience, and it's walk like you know where you're going, mm-hmm. and you will get there. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So that's, like that's it. it. That's all I can, that's, that's how I've lived my life. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Okay. Now, what were you doing to have broken both of your legs? If you don't mind me asking. I don't mind you asking at all. I was not, you know, I was not wearing five inch heels and I fell. I wasn't, you know, in a beauty contest and walking down the steps, you know, no, none of that. Um, it was really very simple. I was walking out my neighbor's front door and, wow. and the rise from the door jam to the first step of her landing uh, of her porch was nine inches, over nine inches deep. And a stair riser by code is only supposed to be about seven inches. So mm-hmm. I've got a huge eight month baby hotel in front of me. I've got oh, three kids God. coming out the door all at the same time under the age of five. Oh, no. And I'm walking out and I, the step isn't where I expect it to be. So I'm, you know, yeah. and I'm off balance anyway. So I step wrong on when I step out and I try and catch myself on my other leg and I heard a pop and I proceeded oh, to roll down the remaining steps. No, the baby was fine. He was totally fine. I had plenty of padding. Thank you very much. But yeah, so the baby (laughs) was totally fine. Um, But I landed with two broken legs. And the reason just stepping wrong when you're eight months pregnant can do that. I learned from the doctor that day at about midnight when we finally got everything taken care of. But um, because our bodies, when we're pregnant, uh, late term pregnancy, release um, a hormone called relaxin. And that Mm. hormone is specifically designed to allow your pelvis to expand. And that's what it does. It loosens the ligaments. So your Mm. pelvis can expand and you can, you know, go through labor and all that. Well, that relaxin is everywhere. So when I stepped out that door and I stepped wrong, the ligaments weren't tight around those bones Mm -hmm. to keep Mm -hmm. keep it rigid. And And they were loose and the bone snapped. Wow. And the doctor told me that's pretty common. I'm like, I have never heard of this happening. What do you mean common? <laughs> Give me a break. You know, why isn't it on CNN every day then? You know, so you, have you, to, you have to relax and happen in your body. And then you have to relax and in your mind because then you, your mind expanded and you were like, I'm not going back to work. Forget this. And you really, well, I yeah, it took me, it took, my son was 18 months old when I started my business. Amazing. So it took me some distance because that was, you know, it really played with my head because I'm, like I said, I'm independent. I'm positive. I'm, you know, I'm walking like I know where I'm going, I'm going, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then boom, I'm sitting, can't do a darn thing. Yeah. I had to depend on others around me and I'm not used to doing that. And I'm Uh also not a, um, not a needy person. I'm not, you know, I, I don't do well with whining and neediness and all that. I'm, I'm this not. Is really difficult for you, I'm it sure. It was so hard. I had to ask my, my husband and my husband had to wash my hair once a week. You know, oh, so something wow. as personal as that. But you know what? I got to tell you, Jessica, that was the most beautiful, wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Out mm-hmm. of this whole time, my husband and son, my little three-year-old son with those little three-year-old fingers, they would take <laughs> me out onto the patio. It was September. So it was beautiful fall days in, in California, Northern California. And they yeah, would take yeah. me out on the patio and wash my hair once a week. And I was in heaven. <laughs> that was the best thing. So here again, there's just- two sides of the same coin. I hate being oh, yeah. needy, but I loved that. So- yeah. <laughs> 
I tell you, lady. And I'm sure you probably needed it. If I'm you, sure. If you ever want the most sensual thing you could ever have, have your husband wash your hair. Wow. I'm telling you, I couldn't do anything about it. Uh -huh. I'm eight months pregnant with two casts. Yeah. We yeah. ain't having none of that. <laughs> I mean, how are you going to have sex with? Yeah. No, ain't <laughs> happening. <laughs> you know, I mean, where are my feet going to go? I can't stand <laughs> up. I'm not, I can't, yeah, no, you can we, just, no, once again, we could have a whole nother show about how your imagination. all of a sudden want to have sex when you're pregnant yes, and they're no. just, oh yeah, it's like, dude, I'm no. not, are you kidding me? Not, get away, <laughs> get away, step back, especially if you have two broken legs, kind of difficult. Yeah, and he was it. totally cool. He was like, yeah, oh, fine. That's great. I don't know whether he, you know, he was looking at me, this beached whale with two casts on it. Oh. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. No, he was good. He was good. You know, the poor guy. Like I said, I'm going to show my husband this and my husband want to sound like, oh, let's prop you up on something. We can make it work. <laughs> no. All he had to do was look at my face and I'm like, exactly, dude, it ain't happening. <laughs> I didn't have to say a word. Are, like, are you freaking kidding me? A pink cast on one leg and a blue cast on the other because we didn't oh. know what we were having. Oh, that's so cute. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How much fun do you really think this is going to be for me? Okay, so I really enjoyed uh, interviewing you, and I'm so I have to ring in myself because you are just too hilarious. We have to do this again. We're definitely I would love it to chat. There's so um, many subjects. Yeah. We just we, we just, just opened them up, man. We could talk about a lot. A, we just never need to have just a free ball of why, yeah, whatever. Yeah, what, yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on today, and why we don't like it. Yeah. Um, so profits and potty training. Tell us how, you know, just choose one way that a mother can profit while potty training. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay, so. Put you on the spot there. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'll just pull it out of my bag of tricks. Yeah. Just pull it out of any of the numerous things that you've already done. <laughs> you know what? There's, yeah, there's a lot. Of, you know, you can. Okay, the first way I started was with a product. So you could, if you have an idea for a product, you can do that product in between. You know, the number one thing is in between the time that you want to take for your child for your family. So everyone's going to be different. I've talked to people who had, I had talked to one gal and interviewed her. She had two nannies, two nannies. One was a live-in nanny and the other one came and visited during the day and took help take what? care of the kids because she had two sets of twins. Oh, and okay. she went off to work. Oh, so God. that's that, you know, you could use a nanny. <laughs> that's what she really floats your boat, but that's not my gig. Okay. My gig yeah. is, I want to raise my kids. So if you want to raise your kids, you have to figure out, here's the number one thing you need to do. And that is what choices do you need to make right now? There, it's all about choices. It's not about balance. Mm -hmm. Balance is not the key. Choices are the key. So every right. minute of every day, you're going to have to make a choice. Some mm -hmm. days your kids are going to be sick. You're not going to be able to work as much. They're going to be clinging on you. They're going to have a fever. They're going to want you to sit on the couch and watch the show with them. The, those days, you're not going to get much work done. You're not going to make very much profit unless you have an online business with residual income that doesn't depend go. on you. Uh -huh. Okay. There so you if you have that, you can sit on the couch all you want, sweetheart, and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But right. if you don't and you're in the building stage of that or any other business, you have to make choices. And you have to be okay with those choices. So if yeah. it's a sick day, you're just gonna have to be okay that you're gonna leave some money on the table, right? Yes, exactly. it's just the way it's gonna be. So um, some days you will need to work and sit your kid in front of the in front of the TV to watch a show. Yes, some days mm -hmm. that's gonna happen, and you're gonna have yeah. to be okay with that. Exactly, you can't feel guilty at all. No, mm -hmm. it's what you got to do. As long as if you do that all the time then yeah, I'd probably say, feel guilty, mama. Come on, let's actually spend yeah. some time with the kid, right? But, exactly. but you're not going to exactly. do that. That's not, most of us aren't going to, most of us don't want to stay home to do that. We can go to an office exactly. to do that and get the nanny. It's totally cool. Yeah, the, whole reason, the whole reason we start a business in the first yeah. place is so that we can be at home. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. you're going to be, deal with it. You're going to have guilt one way or the other. If you're sitting on the couch with a sick kid, you're going to feel guilty you're not at your business. If you're sitting in your business with your kids sitting watching TV, you're going to feel guilty there. So just get over it and make a choice and commit to that choice. 
Mm-hmm. And you're going to make lots of mistakes along the way. I feel I felt guilty for a long time that when I was be- in between my business, when I was still working full t- part time and had my business, the first business, I actually ducked out. My kid was in the baby was asleep in this crib and the four year old was watching a show and I ducked out the front door because I needed quiet because I was talking to a client. And he, they didn't know I was working from home. Okay. Nowadays, it's a little easier because people, we all understand it lots of times, but they didn't yeah. know I was working from home. So I ducked out the front door and was like right next to the front door, one ear to the front door, one ear on the phone, listening for my four-year-old. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I heard my son and they're going, mom, mom, and looking for me. And I'm like, <laughs> crap, what do I do? I'm on the phone and I know he needs me. And I'm, oh. You know, so yeah. I had to like quick wrap it up or try and the, t- the client was just gab, gab, gab. And I'm like, oh, yes. no. you know, it was tough. <laughs> it was really hard. And I chose to stay on the phone and I kept hearing my kid, mom, mom, starting to get a little anxious and worried, yeah. you know, yeah. wondering. And so I, I tried to wrap it up, but I knew I was kind of freaking my kid out because he's looking for me and he can't find me. Yeah. So So, been there. We have been there. We have to make those choices. (laughs) And you know what? I didn't do that again. (laughs) I I didn't answer the phone and let it go to voicemail or did whatever because I did not want that feeling. I just didn't want but I had to experience that feeling to know that, all right, Mary, you need a limit here somewhere. You know what? And I had that experience really um just actually a little while ago. Um I was on a conference call that was about just physicians and we're, you know, because I'm in maternal mental health. So bunch of physicians are on a call and I'm trying to do a uh, doctor's visit as well, you know, on the conference call. So I'm like, okay, well, it'll be okay. I'm going to just listen in. I'll be at the meeting. I'll be, you know, there with her at the appointment. I'll listen in. Somehow my phone, the microphone went off. So I'm on the conference call going, yeah. So she said that her foot's hurting and I'm like, (laughs) and they're they're like, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, and they're like, someone's breathing in their phone. Can you? Oh my gosh. Is, I'm like, okay. You know what? Too so much just, multitasking. I exactly. I disconnected from the conference call and I left. But you, you're you right. You know, you have those moments where it's like you have to choose and you have to be present. I think that was the you biggest. Do. That's what came to me is mm-hmm. to be present. And um, you have some clients that don't understand. You know, they're like, oh, you know, you're in a mommy hat. And it's like, yeah, I am. You yeah. know, I tell all my clients. I'm a mom of six. Yeah. So you're going to hear something in the background. That's it. You're going to, you know, that's it. Just understand that. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. And really that's, that's the way you profit while you're potty training is you make choices. You You Mm -hmm. have to choose. And I'm going to hear, I'm going to hear right now. I'll tell you, it's not going to happen as fast as someone who isn't potty training. Definitely. It's not period. You're not working 80 hours a week. You can't, you would die. (laughs) <laughs> literally Let's be blunt, okay you, you, you you're not sleeping <laughs> yeah you're not sleeping if you're doing that so it's not gonna happen so you know you make the choice and you are okay with however fast it happens and however the kids fit in and that is going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to face because you want the business and you're like but i gotta do it it's the you know somebody else is gonna blah 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 we tell you know all those things that's totally cool i get it been there yes i get it but mm-hmm. your kid Mine is 17 now. It's done. It's done. He's going to be yeah. leaving. He's going to go into college. He's not. Yeah. I mean, you know, this little precious thing that you want to stay home and take care of, you better take care of it. You better be there and be present. Just like you said, Jessica, you better be present because it goes fast. Really, oh, yeah. really fast. Yeah. You can blink. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter, my oldest is in college now. So yeah, I, yeah. I get it. And if you yeah. don't, if you're not there and you're not seeing it, you're not participating in it, your business, okay, here's the thing that finally finally made me realize that. And I wrote a book about that two broken legs experience. And the I finally went, Oh, book the, the book name? <laughs> um, yeah, it is. I I'm it, but let me tell you, say this. It is um my mother in law. I, uh, 2009, she passed away and mine was the last voice she heard and mine was the last face she saw. And when I looked into her eyes, I didn't see any regrets about whether the house was cleaned Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or whether she made enough money. Yeah. It's, it's people regrets. It's always yeah. time. It's always people. My sons were, you know, uh, I think 
nine and uh, 12. Mm -hmm. So she hasn't seen any of this. Yeah. That's what's going to be the regret. It's not going to be that I didn't make enough money or my business right. wasn't big enough. It's yep. that I didn't see or participate with my kid. I didn't cheer them on when they were in soccer. I didn't do whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what you will regret if you don't do it. So that's, that's fine. Good. Sometimes you won't, but most of the time you will. Sometimes, most of the time you'll be there, but sometimes you won't because you'll have to make a choice. Exactly. Yeah. And I think the biggest piece of that is just to define success for yourself. Mm -hmm. Defining what your own success is versus what everyone else thinks success is or what society yep. claims is success or celebrity yep. or whatever because you know we have a lot of women that look up to celebrity moms let's say beyonce for instance <laughs> with the recent stuff that's happening and surrounding around beyonce but really and truthfully okay um and i told my husband this too um there's a rapper you may i don't know if you know him but his name's fabulous and he has a okay no, he has an instagram but anyway I say all that to say, he has an Instagram feed. He's always like this place or that place or at the NBA game. And blah, blah, blah. And my husband looks at that. And he's like, you know, because he's, you know, hanging with the dude. I guess you can call that. You know, he's bought all his CDs, all that stuff. Um, and he's like, yeah, you know what? You know, this guy, he's he's here. He's there. He's doing all this stuff. He's at nightclubs. I said, like, where are his children? Yeah. Yeah. He has two children. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> you know, and I'm same way with Beyonce. Now she's had her in her recent videos and all that good stuff. It's like, okay, where are your children? Yeah. Because you're a celebrity and I understand there's a certain, you know, amount you don't want people to see. And I get that. But ultimately you're singing a song about your husband cheating on you. How is that going to then come down to your child? Yeah. And, and what's your, what's your child yep. going to think when yeah. they hear that? Thank you. And she may not get it now, but when she does. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's, um, I, I can't, I have to tell you, uh, we could talk about that subject too forever <laughs> because really, um, my kids, um, you know, we, we've been married a long time. We've made a lot of sacrifices to be able to stay home, to grow mm -hmm. the business. I mean, it, we, we don't live in a huge house in a huge neighborhood. I'm not put, posting pictures about my Mercedes or my whatever, <laughs> exactly. right? That's not what it's about for me. Okay. Exactly. Um, yeah. It, it's about experiences for me. Exactly. And, um, but most of the kids in my, that my kids hang out with, um, many of them come from divorced families. Mm -hmm. And recently they had one friend, um, where the mother and father divorced in the, the, it's a girl, this, this girl, she doesn't understand why they're, because they act like they're still happy together. You know, we went to an event and, and the dad's given the mom a, you know, a neck massage and she's sitting there and, Oh, it's a wonderful. And I'm like, <laughs> you're divorced. Exactly. <laughs> and she's, she's off seeing someone else, but she doesn't want to, she doesn't want the daughter to tell the dad that she's seeing this guy. And it's like, woman, I'm going to, I'm going to pound you in a minute. Exactly. Right. You, you know what you're doing yeah. to your daughter. Okay. Yeah, you're and the daughter's daughter. just like wondering why I don't get it. My dad comes over for dinner, but it's like, he's a guest and I miss him. And I'm just like, why yeah. are you doing this? What's the purpose? Really? The facade for yeah, everyone. Else. What's going on? You know, that you're doing this to your kids and you think yeah. that the life is better somewhere else, but yet you still get a massage from your husband, ex-husband. What? Yeah. Exactly. You know, you know, so yeah, you don't understand what you're doing. Someone on the outside that's looking might see it, but you're mm -hmm. so caught up in your own crap exactly. that you're not thinking of anybody else and the exactly. consequences that are going to happen. So yeah, it's... So working for the right reasons, let's put it that way, and having success for the right reasons. And <laughs> not, finding that. Not for imagery, not yes. for imagery and not for perception. And not, not just for money. Exactly. Don't be doing that. If you're trying to start a business just for money, you ain't, you're not going to find the success you're really looking for. You exactly. might find the money, but you'll find that it's empty. Mm -hmm. It's empty money. That's a great way of putting it. Because there's no perfect. purpose behind it. You yeah. have to have a purpose of some kind that's greater than yourself. Exactly. And you can now say, well, I'm making money. I want it for the money just because, just so I can give my kids money. Well, your kids don't need money. Your yeah. kids need you. Need you. Yep. Yep.
because bottom line is Jordans will fade. They'll go out. They'll, <laughs> you know, they'll run down. A new Jordan will come out. <laughs> we'll, we'll see the other ones. My kids Oh, a new iPhone. Will new always iPhone will always happen. <laughs> yes. You know, they'll spill orange juice on their laptop and you'll have to get them a new one anyway. Yes, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> Exactly. Right. It, that's, you know, yeah, it, there's always going to be something. It's always going to be something, yeah. but that time you'll never be able to get back. So never. I think that's a great way for us to end. <laughs> so thank you so much, Mary, because we could go on. That's a great way uh, for us to end. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. You have been a wonderful, wonderful uh, guest. And I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule, thank especially you. with all my little hangups to <laughs> jump on with me today and continue on with this interview. Um, so yeah, this is the end of Mama's Confidence um, for this episode. You can um, show, I'm trying to think, you can take a look at all of our <laughs> all of our uh, recent interviews and past interviews uh, there at the uh, Mama's Confidence channel there on YouTube. You can also visit our website at thejawresearchinstitute.com, learn more information about just myself and the wonderful ladies I come in contact with, as, as well as the wonderful men. I keep forgetting about you guys, I apologize, <laughs> that I come in contact with. Um, so that's pretty much it for our show where we interview mamas and papas ha making it happen at home and in the community. All right, so I will see you guys next time. Talk to you soon. Remember, you can always uh, talk to me on Twitter at Joss Speaks, and I hope to meet you in person soon. Bye.